Okay, let's talk about linear equations. Now, before introducing you to linear equations, it is important to know that the solution of linear systems of equations is of primary importance in linear algebra. Why is that? It's because the problem of solving a linear system arises in almost all areas of engineering and science, including the structure of materials, statics and dynamics in civil or mechanical engineering, the design and analysis of electrical circuits, even quantum physics and computer graphics, and much, much more. The solution to linear systems also hides under the surface in many methods. For example, a standard tool for data fitting is cubic splines. So if you're familiar with interpolation, extrapolation, so forth, cubic splines should be a familiar data fitting term. Now, the fit used for cubic splines is found by finding the solution to a system of linear equations. This is how so important and crucial linear equations are. Now, in the coming lectures, and in this one, we're going to talk about the basics of solving linear equations, that is, techniques such as Gaussian elimination, for example. Since most applications deal with systems that have the same number of equations as unknowns that are square systems, we will restrict our discussion to these systems. The approach we take is naive in that it will ignore the numerical problems involved with performing Gaussian elimination on a computer. We will ignore the numerical aspect of Gaussian elimination and focus more on the theoretical part. In future lectures, we will discuss errors occurring due to the fact that a digital computer performs arithmetic operations with a fixed number of digits. We will address this issue in future lectures. So without further ado, let's get started by introducing you to linear equations. Now a linear equation in n unknowns x1 down to xn is an equation of the following form a1 x1 plus a2 x2 down to a n x n equal to b. So this is referred to as linear equation in our x case, right? So the a n's and the b are given. A1 down to An are coefficients that will form the coefficient matrix A and the B will form the vector B. Okay? Now, this might look familiar to you. So let's say N is 2. So we get A1 x1 plus A2 x2 equal to B. An example on this would be, let's say, 2 x1 plus 3 x2 equal to I don't know, 6. Or if you're just in an xy plane, you could say 2x plus 3y is 6, right? Now this linear equation will describe a line passing through the points 3, 0, and 0, 2, right? So linear equations in 2D are actually lines, right? In 3D, they're hyperplanes. In higher dimensions, they're n-dimensional hyperplanes, right? This is in 2D. In 3D, you can say a1x1 plus a2x2 plus a3x3 is B. An example would be, I don't know, 2x plus 3y plus 4z is 12, where x1 is x, x2 is y, x3 is z. And in 3D, you'll get this. This line or hyperplane in 3D should pass through point is 6 on the x-axis, this point is 4, and this point is 3, and hence this is my hyperplane, right? It's all this guy, all this. So linear equations are actually hyperplanes, okay? If you want to plot them geometrically, they are hyperplanes. Now a system of linear equations is just concatenating linear equations on top of each other. That could be expressed as a11 x1 down to a1 n x n equal to b1 a21 x1 down to a2 n x n equal to b2 all the way down to a n1 x1 down to a n n x n equal to b n this is a system of n linear equations 1 2 down to n in n unknowns x1 down to x n right now 
We wish to determine if such a system has a solution, first of all, the existence of a solution. That is to find out if there exists a collection x1 down to xn that satisfy each and every one of those equations, or they satisfy each of the equations simultaneously. In that case, we say that the system, so if it has a solution, so if we could find a solution, we say that the system is consistent. Consistency, so we get consistency if there is a solution. Otherwise, we say that the system is inconsistent, okay? Geometrically, solving a system of linear equations in two or three or even n unknowns is equivalent to determining whether or not a family of lines or hyperplanes in higher dimensions has a common point of intersection. So in 2D, if I'm solving a 2x2 two two system, that is A11x1 plus A12x2 is B1, let's say this is line L1, and A21x1 plus A22x2 is B2, this is line L2. If I'm in the x1, x2 plane, and I plot, just as I plotted over here, the line L1, let's say L1 looks like this, L2 looks like, I don't know, that, then the solution is simply this point. This is when we have a solution. Now, a case where there is no solution is that when, let's say, L1 and L2 are parallel, for example. They do not intersect. Now, let me give you an example over here on a 2x2 two two system. So let's say I've got the following system, 2x plus 3y is 6, and x minus y is 2. Solving this system, you can do any method you want. Let's say you can multiply the second equation by 3, then add them up. You get 5x is 12, which gives you that your x is 12 over 5, right? Now plugging 12 over 5 back, let's say, in the second equation, you get... 12 over 5 minus y is 2. That gives us y is 2 over 5. So doing the math, we obtained a unique solution. xy is 12 over 5 and 2 over 5. That is also 2.4, 0 0.4. Now if we were to plot what's going on, the line 2x plus 3 equal to y is the one in blue whereas the line x minus y equal 2 is the one in red. So as we said previously, their intersection, if they intersect, that is, the intersection is the so-called solution. And here we have that both lines intersect at x equal 2.4 and y equal 0 0.4. Now let's see one more example on linear systems, which arises in polynomial fitting. Say I've got a polynomial y is equal to a polynomial of third degree. That means the polynomial's maximum degree is 3. We also have an additional piece of information that this polynomial should pass through the four points minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 2, 1, 5, and 2, 1. That means that the polynomial should roughly look like this red line. So... How do we compute this red line? By simply finding a 0, a 1, a 2, and a 3. How do we do that? Well, since the line passes through minus 3, minus 2, then this point should satisfy the polynomial. That is, we should have a 0. We substitute minus 3 to get the following. So we just evaluate this polynomial at the point minus 3, minus 2. Same thing goes for the point, the second point, minus 1, 2. We get to the third point, 1, 5, and 2, 1. So this corresponds to a system of linear equations in four unknowns. So we've got four equations in four unknowns. How do we set it in matrix form? Well, we set the matrix of coefficients multiplied by the vector of unknown, that is a0, a1, a2, and a3, equal to the coefficients on the right-hand side, that are minus 2, 2, 5, and 2. So over here, the coefficients are, and there you go. So this is a 4x4 four four system that you can solve 
by elimination, substitution whatsoever. But just wait on till the next lecture where I'll introduce one way of solving linear systems. But for now, after doing any method you want, like elimination, substitution, the methods that you know from high school, you can actually show that you get a0 is 93 over 20, a1 is 221 over 20, a2 is minus 23 over 20, and a3 is minus 41 over 120. So plugging back in the polynomial, we get y is 93 over 20 plus 221 over 120x minus 23 over 20x squared minus 41 over 120x cubed. Now the plot kind of looks like this. And as you can see, indeed passes through the four points. This is a way to check that your work is correct. So as I said, in future lectures, we're going to learn methods on how to solve higher order systems. One method is the Gaussian elimination in which we eliminate unknowns from equations until we find one value. So using this value, we're able to determine other unknown values. So, so in this lecture, we introduced linear systems. So a system of n linear equations and n unknowns x1 down to xn is a family of linear equations as you can see over here. To determine a solution, we also gave two examples on linear systems. So we gave a small two by two example and we interpreted the solution as an intersection of two lines, right? As you can see in the figure, the first equation corresponds to the blue line, the second equation corresponds to the red line. The solution is thus the intersection. Another application given was polynomial fitting. That is, given a polynomial with unknown coefficients of degree 3, for example, find the polynomial that passes through four given points. So in general, you could fit up to a polynomial of degree n with n plus 1 unknown coefficients given that this polynomial passes through n plus 1 points. 